Hi, welcome to Design Matters. My name is Keith Jones and I'll be speaking with you about all things that are designed and things that actually matter. This show is comprised of ideas that when you think about design, everything around us is actually designed. From the things you do, from the people you meet, the places you eat, even the things where you shop at, it's all been designed. And today we're gonna to have a special guest by the name of LaShawn Coster, who's gonna be speaking about products she designed. And I'll also showcase one of the products that I'm very familiar with by the name of Wilson Art. It's actually laminates. So join me today as I speak about several things that are designed. Our first product that I mentioned, uh, Wilson Art, is actually paper. The majority of the people wouldn't even believe that this is actually paper. And in most cases, actual wood, yes. So thinking of this, this table here where you get a chance to see that it's wood, but if you wanted to change it, there's a way that you can change this product to look like different objects, like I mentioned. So I brought some samples to show you that basically speaks about various different types that you could do, and I mentioned that bricks so for example, let's say you wanted to change this, this podium to look like bricks, you could do it. But before I go into actual the design product itself, I want to speak about how the product is manufactured. So you take actual paper, yes, paper, several different layers of paper, and you basically combine it with a protective overlay that allows it to be scratch resistant, stain resistant, or even heat resistant. And then you add a decorative sheet, which is the actual color or finish that you'll see. And then there's layers of craft papers. So for the most um, examples of laminate, it's usually about two to three sheets of craft paper, but this could go as thick to up to hundreds of sheets of craft paper. So when you think about a thickness or thicker version of laminate, you may be thinking about designing like lockers or in this case, redesigning a podium. So you could take any of the various examples from Wilson Art that has more than hundreds and hundreds. At this point, I think they've got about a thousand different decorative options that you could change and finish furniture, cabinetry, millwork, cabinets, countertops, and the list goes on. So this particular product itself can be finished and to look like any of these examples. There's several different levels or layers in terms of options when it comes to laminate. And when I, I just want to show you some of the examples because there's different wood grains, but there's also textures. So if you're thinking about changing something that looked like a particular wood, imagine if you wanted to have a soft finish or a, a textured finish that feels more closer to actual wood grain itself, you could do that. And some of these examples showcase what your designer op options really could be. So thinking about browns, blacks, grays, the list goes on. But then there's also other products. And one of the products that I really love from this particular manufacturer is their traceless product that basically does not show fingerprints. And this thinking of a project where you might not want fingerprints to show, let's say you, you're thinking about redesigning your kitchen and your cabinets where a lot of people are upset about fingerprints that they may see, this is a great product that I think is suitable for that type of application because it's easy to clean, won't show any fingerprints, and it's available in about five or six different colorways. So as I mentioned, there's several different options, but it's really up to you to decide exactly where and what your product your end result product would look like. So I've taken the liberty to bring a couple different examples just to show you how adventurous your design could go. So I mentioned that there's bricks. There's also exotic stone options that mimic actual stone. And it's available in particular, like I mentioned, finishes that could be gloss or matte finishes. It doesn't have to be exactly what you see. And even in this case where you could see like a Carrera marble, you're eligible to change and almost think outside the box when it comes to design products. This manufacturer has been around for about 50 plus years and they are one of the number one providers of this particular engineered surface. Um, and in terms of thickness options or application options, there's versions of this product that you could use to create cabinets um, where it doesn't allow for moisture. So imagine if you're doing a project where you're concerned about moisture or delamination. If you're not familiar with how laminate works in terms of applicating or applying it, there is a process that basically what happens is you take the product, you add an adhesive to the backer, and then you basically lay it down and in a sense, based on the measurements of your desired product, 
end result product, this is what would happen in terms of applying it. But if you were designing something like a locker and you were concerned with uh, impact or whatnot, this is where you probably want to change from just a typical thin product, thin laminate, to actual thicker laminate, because that basically the durability factor is there. Um, but in terms of suitable substrates, I want to make sure I mention that because this podium is made of like a particle board um, in a sense that not every surface is applicable to laminates. So just to show you some examples of what's not applicable in terms of applying laminates to, you could use anything like, in this case, um, plywood works. Sheetrock wouldn't work, and I'll tell you why it wouldn't work. Basically, this particular surface could gain moisture, and if moisture were to get to this, you basically would have delamination, like the weight of the laminate itself would come at come would not maintain adhered to the surface, and that could potentially damage your product in a sense. Other suitable substrates are also fiberboard. Any particular substrate that, that has very smooth surface that can be clean and the laminate itself can lay flat on it is what you're, what you're looking for to make sure that the consistency of your product, the end finished result of the product looks great. So um, just to wrap that up, I want to mention that the products are sold throughout the world, throughout the country, and you can get it in various different sizes and colors and whatnot. So after this break, we'll come back with a little bit more about products that have been designed. Welcome back to Design Matters. I'm your host, Keith Jones, and we're here with our special guest, LaShawn <laughs> Costa. And I know she has a lot of exciting things mm -hmm. to tell us yes. today. So <laughs> I'm welcome. I want to thank you again for taking the opportunity yes. to, to meet with us today. It's nice to meet you. I guess my first question for you really is, like, tell me your story. Bring us up to speed about your background and what brought you up to today. Well, I'm originally from Georgetown, Ghana, and I moved here when I was eight and I always had the dream to become a designer and just being able to get this far in my life so far is an amazing opportunity to be here speaking to you about my work says a lot a small girl coming from that country coming here I've done amazing things and I'm so excited to share what I've done so far with you guys mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there any particular influences? Like you mentioned you were you're born in Guyana and yeah. you, you moved to New York. Is this relatively new or like how, how long ago was the commute from Guyana to New York? So I came here when I was eight, so it's a long time ago. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm much older now. <laughs> but um, making that jump to this country has given me like millions of opportunities and has put me into this spot now that I'm able to share my work and talk about what I really want to share. When you think about design itself mm -hmm. and you know our show is about designed matters yes. and you your particular focus is fashion. Mm -hmm. But I took a chance to like do a little research, look up, look at your website, Instagram, mm -hmm. and the products that you've designed, like the, the garments are very like conversation pieces. Mm -hmm. Can you tell like the audience like what influences you to design the, the garments that you designed? Well, one thing that really influenced me to do what I do is black women. So I always, coming from a foreign country, coming to this country, I always felt like an outcast. So I decided to talk to women of color that's just like me and hear their experiences. So I focus on what they tell me and from that, from their feelings, I pull and design from that. So mm -hmm. yeah. But I don't think, I guess I, I don't want to outspeak, but mm -hmm. is it is your focus only on black women or you just, your influences for the pieces that you design is for For black right women? now, that's one of my main pieces that I'm pulling from, okay. yeah. And would you say there's anything that particularly um, motivates you in terms of black women? Is, mm -hmm. it just the, is it just their skin color or their upbringing, background? Like um, just overall, the reason I got to um, talking about black women is because I am one. And I realize I've gone through a lot of similar experiences than, um, as other black women. So I wanted to like bring us all as a collective and create something that could showcase our beauty and also our struggles. So if you, you have designed these pieces that speak to and for black women, mm -hmm. um, what else could motivate you then? Because outside of the tone of a skin mm -hmm. color, there must be something else in terms of the influences behind your pieces. Like, is there anything particular yes. that would stand out? 
Yes. You um, brought some pieces yeah, with I you did. today. So I'd love <laughs> to see some of those and, and hear like your thoughts behind yes. those pieces. Yes. One of my favorite artists that inspired the pieces I'm about to show you is H.R. Geiger. He is a painter, a sculptor, and he also did like the alien movies. Mm. Like he um, designed the, the aliens and stuff like that. So I love to work with leather or stuff that's um, gory and dark and mysterious. So I was very inspired by his paintings and I pulled a lot from that as well to come up with what you're about to see today. So is this where you want to like pull in some of the pieces and yeah. sort of speak about those? <laughs> yeah, because of course. I'm not necessarily, I, I have seen the, the, the movies that you spoke about, mm -hmm. but you, you should go in to explain a little yeah. bit more about that. Of course. So this piece you're about to see right here oh, wow. was molded. Well, first I'll start off with, I saw like an H H R Geiger painting and I was like, I love the way he just pulls from like dark, crazy backgrounds. And he's, he usually get most of his ideas from dreams. So I decided to talk to, like I said, black women and they f most of them said that they felt alienated. So I kind of used that word and like digged in on like aliens and like looking like um, the horns and stuff like that. So it's beautiful, but then it's also something that you would also be like, what, what is this? It, okay. You question it. <laughs> it's made out of wood, all wood. And I did it in Italy. Mm -hmm. I went on a trip there. I was sponsored to do this. So I'm like, really, this is one of my favorite pieces. Would, is this something you would just wear, like going out on the <laughs> night, or like where would? No, I would not. <laughs> it's so going it's out at like night. Art, it's more of an art piece. Okay. So I, um, what I did was I molded one of my models, a live mold of her head, and th that mold um, was the base of what keeps this the way it is. Okay. And then from that, I was able to mill it on a milling machine and stuff like that. Any particular type of wood? Um, it's a wood from Africa, but I'm not sure the name of the wood, <laughs> but I know it's based in Africa. So that almost seems like you're keeping that rich yeah. heritage like, mm -hmm. from Africa for mm -hmm. African women. In yes, the I'm trying to keep it. Okay. Is there anything else you would like to of show? Of course. I'm very impressed with that. When I look at it, I almost think of like Maleficent. Yes, I get that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> This is another piece. So if you guys know of H.R. Gagger, he used a lot of leather and things like that. So I decided to do a corset. And this corset, I wanted to figure out ways to make the leather pop. It's like different ridges. And I wanted it to look like it's been to war and battle because I feel like my whole life I had to fight <laughs> to be where I am. So it's like a distressed leather. Yeah. Can I touch Of course feel? you can. Oh, wow. I mean, it has a lot of texture in it. It's very soft and supple. Mm -hmm. So it's basically, I would say, sheepskin leather. So it's very, like he said, it's very soft. But what's hard is um, the layers of leather underneath it that I stacked up so you could get this rigid feeling to it. And it's going to stay like this forever because it's leather and leather doesn't mm -hmm. really move. Do you have to treat it? Um, Not really. It took me, I would say, like... A year to come up with a technique like this it took a very long time <laughs> so this I mean it's very impressive to see these pieces mm -hmm. not only because of the artist artistry that comes with designing pieces like this I mean you think about costume design and mm -hmm. fashion it is it really plays hand in hand and it ha and, and design itself has an approach that invokes like I mentioned when we started the yes. conversation and there's a rich heritage I think that you keep within your designs so where would you say you're gonna go in terms of your fashion uh, mm -hmm. designing abilities? So I want to, I would say five years from now, I wanna use fashion and uh, sculpting more, in more of a gallery art form. Cause right now in the industry, fashion isn't really seen as art in a gallery setting. So I'm trying to change that. I'm trying to um, allow people to see that this is also considered art and it's not just something that could be uh, shown down the runway. It's more than that. More than that. Yeah. It's it's wearable art, would mm -hmm. you say, also? Yes. So how about someone like myself? Obviously, you mentioned for <laughs> black women. Yeah. Or do you see yourself maybe doing something for black men later? Or? Yes. Well, I would have to like change my techniques and like learn uh, learn the um, the male form 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> later <God. laughs> on. But I definitely see myself incorporating more inspiration from different parts of the world. But right now, I'm just trying to like focus on that and get that work out there, let people hear it, and then move on to the next big thing. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I always ask my guests on this show, mm -hmm. why does design matter to you? Mm. Design mattered to me because I personally cannot live without designing. It's who I am. It's what I breathe. I try to do other things. I'm like, mm-mm. It's, it's not, not going to work. It's not going to work. I have to just keep doing it. It's in my blood. And I feel like when I'm 60, I'm still going to be doing what I love to do, and that's designing and creating. Wow. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I've, we've all heard that phrase that yeah. if you do what you love, you, you'll never work a day in your life. Yeah. So do you feel like it's work? Is it still fun? Yeah, it's still fun. It's a lot of hard work, but anything you're going to do is going to be hard work. But I love what I do. I can um, sew for hours, 10 hours, sculpt for like two days straight. And it doesn't feel like work because I love it. I love the ending product. If I have to stay up for a month, I will stay up for a stay month, a month and just do that. what I got to do because this is what I love to do. And I honestly can't see myself doing anything. anything but. So I can't wait for the five-year-old me from now to just look back at this interview and be like, wow, I've grown. Look at what I yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there any last thoughts that you like to tell that individual, that up-and-coming designer wannabe or mm -hmm. a product designer or costume designer? Yeah. Something, what kind of motivation would you offer? I would offer them never give up. Don't matter who tells you to stop. Don't stop doing what you want to do. If you want to keep going after your dreams, you have to stick to it. You have to be very dedicated because once you stop, once you give those haters the opportunity to come in with you and your dream, that's it. You just got to keep going. And I have to keep saying that to myself to remember that without the determination, I'm not going to be able to get to that goal I see five years from there. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm very impressed. <laughs> and I'm, there's a lot that I myself can learn from someone like mm -hmm. yourself who really understands the, the craftsmanship that comes with creating wearable art or mm -hmm. just art in general. I'm, I, I think you're on to something. And again, I want to thank you for spending some time with us yes. today. I think this is very important, guys. Anyone out there watching, LaShawn has mentioned something I think we all should be aware of, is not giving up on your dream. If you're passionate, as we both are about design, here's an opportunity to take some cues and learn from it and really tweak that, that next project that you, that you work on and really just think. Um, the headpiece, though, before I, before I finish, <laughs> I do have to mention that just seeing that, you mentioned that it has a lot to do with um, Africa, yeah. the black woman, and it is a, it's not necessarily, is it wearable art? Like, could you, yeah, you, you could, could wear, that. wear that out? Mm -hmm. Describe an outfit that you would wear with something like that. Um, if you pull up to the scene with that, you got to. I feel like you got to have the whole combat boots and everything. Like, you need to be strong with it. Because you can't show up with a headpiece that, you know, marvelous and not have the whole outfit piece okay. going on. So I would say all leather down and just focus. And it's more about not even the garments you're wearing, but the attitude you're going to exude wearing these garments. So it's about attitude, yeah. movement, mm -hmm. um, just... Confidence. But when I look at it, um, and almost, no offense, it's a, it's a bit dramatic. So mm -hmm. this person has to be very confident. Very confident. And also almost be prepared for a lot of stares. Mm -hmm. um, photog photographs mm -hmm. of people might come up and want to ask questions about it. And is that something you would say you really want? You want people to sort of remember yes. your pieces? Yes. Because that was something I, I, when I did some research and looked at your background, I know you studied here in, in, in New York at yes. Parsons. Mm -hmm. Um, this headpiece, is this something that you would say you also learn certain design competencies from the design school that in, that sort of plays with the whole overall theme of Africa and black women? Or what yes. would you say to that? I would say um, getting to a level of design like this, creating, I joined high school. I went to a program called Parsons Scholars. And from that program, I was able to divert myself from fashion and just focus on art and building and like really creative and thinking of how to come up with stuff that's going to be a one piece stopper. Mm -hmm. And that's what I usually do. Most of my work is like you see that one special piece. You're like, wow, like 
this is it, like this is beautiful. So I like doing pieces that's just like one and then go on to the next one because that one is the one. And Parsons have given me how to, how to create my work and also present it in a very professional manner. Well, I will say this headpiece <laughs> is definitely speaks to that, to that, to that whole idea about mm -hmm. like learning competencies that really influence a movement. Mm -hmm. So who would you say would wear this headpiece automatically? Automatically. Like who, if you had to pick a celebrity or a uh, actor or some, somewhat. Oh my God, that's hard. But I gotta go with my girl Rihanna. I, and to hear you say that, like it, that's the most funny thing. I mean, my mind thinking Rihanna. She would be could like, this. she would turn she that would, headpiece she out. She would do it, but <laughs> I think that it's it's important to know that your whole collection yeah. of fashion uh, design pieces are really about people with a lot of energy yeah. and, and body or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, LaShawn, I want to thank you again for mm -hmm. spending some time with us today. It's, it's, I know you could be at a lot of other places, but you're here with us. <laughs> Before we go, I want you to make sure you share information about how anyone can look you up or mm -hmm. find you. Go ahead and share some information about your contact. Yes, of course. So I'm heavily on Instagram. If you want to contact me or you like my work and just want to keep supporting, um, my Instagram is LaShawn Coster, L-A-S-H-U-N. C O S T O R, LaShawn Costa. <laughs> and once you put that in, I pop up. You see the Guyanese flag right there. That's me. And you could also support me um, Googling my name as well, LaShawn Costa, and Google my GoFundMe as well. Wow. Yeah. There you have it, folks. Again, thank you guys for tuning in today. I want to thank the set. I want to thank any of the sponsors and also our special guest, LaShawn, today. Um, again, my name is Keith Jones, and thank you for tuning in to Designed Matters. And if it's true that you're inventing a real Jew, then who is the nigger? I am not the victim here. I know one thing from another. I know I'm going to born and I'm I'm going to be, you know, I was born, I'm going to suffer, and I'm going to die. And the only way you get through life is to know the worst things about it. Now that a person is more important than anything else. Anything else. I learned this because I had to learn it. But you still think, I gather, that the nigger is necessary.